Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 25 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're teaching your Raspberry Pi who's boss. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at Sunfounder. Sunfounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of Raspberry Pi lessons. And in this class, we are using the Sunfounder, the Sunfounder Raphael Raspberry Pi kit. Most of you guys probably already have your kit, but if you don't, look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon. You can hop over there and pick this kit up. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we're operating on identical hardware. But enough of this shameful advertising. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to teach you today is how to connect the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor <coughs> to your Raspberry Pi and get it hooked up and running and able to measure temperature and humidity. Now, if you went through our most excellent Arduino classes, you know that that was very easy to do in Arduino. And everything in Raspberry Pi is, is just a little bit more tedious, but I've, I've kind of come up with the easiest way to do it. And I'm going to take you through it and I think you will enjoy it. And I think you won't have any trouble at all. So to get this thing started, what we are going to do is we're going to come over and look at what you're going to need in the project. What you're going to need is we have got the Raspberry Pi. And for this, uh, for this uh, project, I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, jumper cable and come over to the breakout board. <coughs> All of this is in your Sun Founder kit. You're going to need your DHT11. It's the only component in the kit that has this blue case on it, so it's kind of hard to miss. You're going to need a <clears throat> you're going to need a 10k resistor, and you're going to need these little jumper wires. Now, you can use just those long, loopy ones, but I really like to build with these short, neat jumper wires. Also, before we get started, I've already got the I've already got the uh, the breakout board connected, and what I have is I have a jumper from 3.3 volts up to the positive rail, and I've got or wait a minute, that is the positive rail down here. Just lost the tip off of my most excellent iPad pointer. Okay, you've got the 3.3 volts down here at this lower left corner. It's labeled. I've got that hooked to the power rail. And then I jumper the power rail from the lower to the upper. <coughs> so both, uh, both of those rails are 3.3 volts. And then up here, I've connected ground which is the third pin over. I believe that is indeed the third pin over. And I've got that hooked to the ground rail. And then I jumper the ground rail down to the bottom ground rail. So basically I can snag power or I can snag ground from either one of these, uh, of these four, uh, four rails. I usually just leave this board hooked up like this so that I don't have to go in and redo it every time. And that way I can jump in and get my build done a little simpler. So let me show you what we're going to be trying to hook up here. We're going to get the DHT. We're going to get the DHT 11 sensor. All right. And we're going to hook it uh, in, in the following way, the left pin, the positive pin is going to go to your 3.3 volt rail. The right pin, the negative one, is going to go to your ground rail. And then you're going to have a 10K resistor also on that signal, the center pin, to plus 3.3 volts. And then that center pin, which is the output pin, we're going to take it to GPIO17. Now, what I like to do in a build like this, this is my nice jumper wire, and this is about the right size. But what I'm going to do, I'll just let you come and have a better view here. I like to start with this wire because I don't like to have to bend these wires up. So I'm going to bring this wire over to GPIO 17 as marked on the breakout board. 
and then I'm going to come over to where it just naturally its natural length extension like that. Now what do I know? I know that the center pin needs to go to that so I'm going to go ahead and plug the DHT11 in where the center pin is correctly connected to that uh, GPIO17. I'm going to come over to the left and with this itsy bitsy jumper wire and if you guys don't have these straight jumper wires look in this description there's a link over to amazon there's this bojack uh, set that's just got a bundle of different size of these straight wires and it allows me to do neater builds but i'm going to come over here to the left pin of the dta dht 11 and i'm going to go to the positive rail if i can you know i in 10 years on YouTube, I have never let the smoke out of a component live on YouTube, but I'm sure that day is coming, but I'm trying to be real careful. This one goes to the ground rail. Okay, so the ground rail to the right pin, the 3.3 volts to the left pin. Guys, this DHT11, you got to be a little careful with it because if you hook it up backwards or hook it up wrong, you can let the smoke out and you don't want to be the guy who does that. Now we're going to get the 10K resistor and I'm going to go from that center pin, again the center pin, that signal pin, and I'm going to go to five uh, to the 3.3 volts. And I think this is probably something like a, something a little bit akin to a pull-up resistor, but you really want that in there because it gives you a little bit more stable operation. All right, I think we're wired up. I think we're good to go. I think we are almost ready to start coding. So I will move over here to the code view. <clears throat> and now what I'm going to need you to do is I'm going to need you to fire up a terminal. So down in the bottom left, in the bottom left, let me turn, let me turn my title off momentarily. So down here in the bottom left, right, you see this little terminal icon, fire that up. And then I need to get it where you can see it. Okay. And now we need to install the Python library for the DHT11. And it's pretty easy to do. You're going to do a pip three, a pip three. If you just do pip install, it'll put it in Python 2.7. If you want it to go into the, your Python three, you need to say pip three. And then you're going to say install and you're going to say DHT11 like that. Could it really be that easy? Let's see. Boom. Look at that. Look at that. It's looking good. Install, installing collected packages successfully installed. We've got ourselves a library. Let's close this terminal now. Let's close this terminal. And now what we need to go to is Thony, which you come to programming, come down to Mr. Thony. Some people say Thony. I like to say Thony. And then what we are going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say new. I always like to start by saving. So I'm going to save this program as temp humidity.py like that. Boom, fresh new Python program, just waiting for you to write. All right, actually, this thing is going to be pretty easy to get coded up because we have the library. I looked into writing the program where we would go and directly interact with the DHT11, but it was a lot of very tedious code. And since this is a standard Python package, I just decided let's use the DHT11 library. So what we're going to need to do is import RPI dot gpio as gpio get your case right uppercase r uppercase p little case i and then the gpio is all uppercase now we need to import that library that we just installed dht11 and then we're going to need to import time because we're going to need to put a delay in there now we're not going to need to tell it what board numbering system we are using so i'm going to say gpio dot set mode and then we are going to use the gpio.bcm why the .bcm because this uh because this breakout board is labeled with the bcm numbering and that way i can just read the number right off the pin if that makes sense okay now i need to set up 
that uh, I need to set up that library. So I'm going to create an object called my DHT like that. And that is equal to DHT 11, the library <coughs> that we uh, just installed. And then DHT uppercase 11. And that is going to, you know, create the object, my DHT. And I've got to tell it where it is. Well, mine is on pin equals 17 because that's where we hook that signal pin. So far, so good. Not too much could go wrong with this so far. Now what we were ready to do is go out and read from the sensor. So I'm going to always do a try. And then I'll go ahead and finish with the accept. And this just allows us to cleanly exit the program. So I, I You'll sit up in the try until it sees control C and then it will jump down to the accept because I'm going to say accept keyboard interrupt like that. And when you hit the control C, it sees a keyboard interrupt. It jumps down to the accept. And what do I want to do in the accept? Well, I want to do a GPIO dot clean up. <clears throat> to release those uh, GPIO pins for the next person who comes along. And then I am going to say print just so that I know that it did it. GPI, GPIO, good to go. How fun is that? All right, like that, close it. Now I'm ready to come up and write the actual program. So I want it to continue to read and print these things. So I'm going to create a loop while true when is true true when is true 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 is always true so this will be an infinite loop until we hit the control c and then it will jump down to the accept now i need to go out and i need to make a reading i need to make a reading from the dht so i'm going to say result is going to be equal to my dht that's my object dot read so i'm going to read it OK, and now I'm going to say <clears throat> I'm going to tell you that this is a little bit of a tricky timing thing. And so sometimes when you go and read the sen sensor, you don't get a valid result. The good news is it knows that it doesn't have a valid result. And so what you can say is if result, that's what I just read, dot is underscore valid, valid like that. <clears throat> so only if I have valid data, then what I will want to do is print. And then I'm going to print temperature is, and I need to put that in a quote, temperature is, and I think I'll put a colon space. And then what I want to print is the result. That's what I just read dot temperature. OK, and then I'm going to say humidity is I better get out of your way because I know how angry you all become when my head is in front of the code. So humidity is and then space, close that comma result dot. Can you guess hum, hu, humidity like that? Now we close the parentheses and now we're going to <clears throat> we are going to need to and I think I'll do the delay outside. I'm going to do a time dot sleep of two of point two. <clears throat> so that way we're not just sitting and hammering the sensor too hard that it gives a little delay between our read. Now I want to show you that this line is where you actually read from the sensor and then you get what you read with this and this okay with this and this but if you read outside the loop and then you just keep going to result dot temperature it's going to give you the same one every time you have to go back and do a fresh read each time inside the while loop does that make sense could this really be this easy, I ask you. High tech componentry, could re we really be this close to getting temperature and humidity? I certainly hope so. So I better take a big swig of coffee. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and we're going to run the program. I will need you to hold your breath. Boom. 
boom, look at that. Temperature is 27.7, that's in degrees Celsius, and the humidity here is 53. And 53 does indeed sound about right. 53% humidity is about right for where we are here. And I kind of wish we would see this thing change. There it is. I put my finger on it just to make sure that we're getting fresh readings and not just using the same one. Wanted to make sure that I got the program set up. So this library only reports in degrees C, but it's very easy to convert from degrees C to degrees F if you want to do that. But basically now what you have is <coughs> you have a new skill in your Raspberry Pi toolkit. You have a new tool in your Raspberry Pi toolkit. And what you can do is you can now incorporate into your projects temperature and humidity readings. Now, I will say that this particular sensor is a very low cost one and it allows you to learn how to do it. It allows you to go in and do some simple demonstrations. If you were really going to put this outside and you need a more rugged sensor, there's the DHT22 and it doesn't cost very much. But if you were really going to deploy this outside, you would probably need to upgrade your sensor. But this certainly is a nice one to learn on. And boom, we are there. Now, probably in the next lesson, what I'm going to do in the next lesson, probably I'm going to show you how to use the LCD readout from the SunFounder kit. And then you could imagine making a little weather station where you're measuring temperature and humidity, and then you're printing it out on the LCD. And in that point, you could sort of disconnect from your desktop, power the whole thing with like a USB battery pack, and then you would be able to go mobile with this thing, okay? Also, I should say, you guys that are taking my uh, Fusion 360 and 3D printing class, you would be able to print a nice case and make an enclosure and just have a unit that you could walk around with and display temperature and humidity in a portable standalone uh, standalone. Uh, uh, unit. I look kind of silly floating there, don't I? So we're going to put the title back up there so I'm not just like floating in midair. Okay, guys, I really hope that you're having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them. You can see what my strategy is. My strategy is to show you how to use the different components in the kit and then you need to be thinking about how you can connect them together. You've got all these sensors, then you have all these actuators and displays, and you can start mixing them together to create projects. And that's what's going to that's what's going to be the point that things really really get fun. But it's hard for me to do a project-based lesson before you've learned the fundamentals of the com components. So we're trying to kind of blast through these components, and then as we come in in later lessons, we're going to be combining components to do projects. Okay, guys, hope you're having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them. If you're enjoying these lessons, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Also, what I need you to do is subscribe to the channel. When you do, make sure you ring that bell and ask to get notifications so you'll know when my future classes in this uh, in this series are released. Also, share this with other people because the world needs more people building projects and doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.